Hey guys, welcome! In this video, I will be talking about one of my favorite things, magic mushrooms. Did you know there are about 200 different strains of psychedelic mushrooms? And researchers are finally looking into them for our health. They are said to lower anxiety and depression if taken safely. Finally, science is catching up to how we feel. But what I find super fascinating is that although all mushroom strains contain psychotropic compounds, each strain has unique trips. Some have more visual effects due to high levels of psilocybin. Some even give darker, more thought-provoking trips. But all have compounds that are beneficial to our brains. They all share similar characteristics as well. When touched, damaged, or become oxidized, they turn a bluish color. I thought it was mold at first, but I was so happy when I found out that it's just a natural process. So today I'm going to be showing you how you can grow your own magic mushrooms in a bag. It's pretty simple. The only big thing you will need to worry about is contamination, which happened to me a few times. So a few ways to prevent contamination is to grow your shrooms in a very low traffic area, such as your closet. And before walking in to check your shrooms, spray the area with disinfectant. Wear gloves and put some isopropyl alcohol on them before you handle your shrooms. Also, if you have an air purifier, that would be a great addition to your shroom setup. Okay, so let's get into the point of this video. You will need cotton balls, scissors, 70% isopropyl alcohol, and Lysol. First things first, we gotta disinfect our area and our utensils. So I sprayed Lysol on my table, then I disinfected my scissors and my gloves that I have on. Now we need to shake the syringe very well. The spores may look like black clumps in the syringe, but once you shake well, the spores will separate, which is the goal. Now we can get our syringes and bags ready for inoculation. So. We need to disinfect the syringe needles first. Your spores will most likely come with its own alcohol pad, so we will just use that. Let's also disinfect the entry point on the bag as well. Now we can start to inoculate the bag with the spores. Just push the needle in and put a little bit of spores in at a time at different angles so that the mycelium doesn't just grow in one spot. Now, Cover the entry point with the tape. Put it in another container in a dark, warm place. I bought a seed heating mat, which helps the mycelium grow faster, I have found. When the mycelium growth looks about a half to three quarters colonized, it is ready to mix. I mixed my bag a little bit before halfway, and I still got great results. Now we wait several weeks for the mushrooms to sprout. The substrate will start to feel solid. This is how we know when the mycelium is about to colonize and the mushrooms will start to grow. You can spray the sides of the bag if the mushrooms are looking a little dry. Remember, we want to keep the mushrooms in a warm, moist environment. And these are what some of the shrooms looked like from the first flush. These are the golden cubenzies. Or the second bag I inoculated are called Maui Platinum, which I have never tried before, but I'm going to be trying some right now. I also find that the fresh mushrooms taste a little bit better and are more tolerable than the dried mushrooms. Because I used to like the taste of mushrooms, but I just can't stand it anymore. But the fresh ones are way more tolerable. Since a monotub yields more results, I will be doing a different video about growing mushrooms in a monotub in the near future. I hope this video helped you. I hope you have a great, healthful day.